Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, magnetic force between two balls. Um, so this problem says basically you have some baskets in positions, and the positions you get those in this array, and you have M balls. Um, okay, so you have N empty baskets and M balls, and you need to distribute balls into these baskets. Okay. So for example, here we put this ball here, this ball here, and then this ball here, right? Um, and then the goal here is to place these balls in such a way that to distribute the balls into the baskets such that the minimum magnetic force between any two balls is maximized, okay? So basically the minimum distance between, um, between all the balls is the maximum possible. Uh, this is sort of the min-max type of problems here. Um, and um, the magnetic force between two positions is, is just the absolute value of the difference, okay? And the goal here is we want to return this, the required force that, that, that is going to be the, the maximum possible minimum magnetic force we can get. Um, yep. Uh, this just requires a little bit more thinking to, but it's, it's straightforward if you think about it. Um, basically, we have multiple ways we can place the balls. Among all of these ways, what is the one such that the minimum magnetic force between all of the balls of that configuration is the maximum possible among all the configurations, right? So that's the idea here. Um, and you, if you see here, we have position array and we have the number of balls, for example. So here, you can, the, the idea here is that for this specific case, the minimum one we can get is three because we, you place one here, you place one here, and then you place one here. And so that means basically the difference between ball at position one and four is three. Between four and seven is also three, and between one and seven is six. So the minimum is three. Um, if you try to get like f four, uh, just to see if a bigger value is possible, well, um, you can't really, because if you place in one, uh, the only other place you would have to, uh, to place to get the minimum of four is five, position five. But then if you put on, you can't put on position five first, but even if you could, there is a smaller difference now of value two, right? So, um, but anyway, you can't because there is no basket um, in position five. So the optimal value is three. Okay, um, the, the, the constraints are quite bit, big, 10 to the power of five. Um, now, one thing to note is these min-max problems where you are asked to find the maximum possible uh, something such that it verifies some condition. Usually it can be solved with binary search if the domain or the space you are looking at um, uh, can be either sorted or you can get a monotonic function. Um, and so that's what we will try to explore in the solution now. Um, okay, so how can we tackle this? Well, um, if you take a look here, the idea is, um, if we want to try binary search, the idea is to try to find a monotonic function. And the monotonic function is basically a function where it's either first it's false for smaller values, and then it becomes true, and once it's true, it stays true, or the reverse, it starts out true, and then at some point, the function becomes false, and then it stays false, right? So that's what we are sort of trying to do this, to find. If we find something that applies to this problem with this, then we should be able to do binary search, okay? So let's see, what would be the function? Well, the function usually is the, the exact thing we are looking for. So let's call it f of x. Um, so f of x needs to be what we are asked, which is, um, can we place m balls, so a total of, of the balls, in baskets, right, such that, um, such that the minimum for magnetic force is x, right, because this is what we want to maximize, right, and so um, if we check this, let's take some examples and see if we, if it's actually monotonic. So if, let's say for example, if three is possible, then that does, in this case, three is possible for this example. So let's see if two is possible. So let's just copy this over. 
Okay, so we know here three is possible. Is two possible? Well, since th two is definitely possible because we can just place the ball, po place ball one in position one, ball two in position uh, three, and then ball three in position seven, then now the difference here is two, the difference here between seven and three is four, and the difference between one and seven is six, so this is the minimum magnetic force. Same thing with one. Can we get one? Well, yes, we can put ball one here, ball two here, and ball three here. Now this is one, the difference here is five, and here is six, and this is the minimum. And so you can see the format here, at least with anything smaller, we know it's true. Now what about any something bigger, let's say for example four. What about for four here? Well for four, um, let's see if it's possible for this function. So for four, mm, well we can try to place ball one here, but we need the minimum to be four. So it has to be here so that, uh, no, it can be at four. It has to be at five, okay? Even though f we don't have five. Right? But even though if we, even if we had five, then the five between five and seven, the difference would be two, and two would be the actual minimum, and so four is not possible. Okay? Um, you can try a lot of other examples. You could try five, you could try with different configurations. Um, but so we determine here that in this example where three is the maximum magnetic force, everything below three was. Uh, f uh, true and everything above it stays at false. So we have this pattern of true, false, false, false. So that means we can apply our binary search. So we are in this case here. Okay. So now that we know we can apply binary search, all that it's remained for us to determine is what is the implementation of f of x, the function f of x, and what are the low and high values, right? Um, and then we can just apply our template binary search. Now, for low and high, this is easy because what's the domain here? The domain is just the values of x. What are the values of x? The values of x are just the, the magnetic force, so the difference between the positions. And so the smallest value possible is just zero, but we need to go up. Just Usually for low, for binary search, for this format, you go just the value before the lowest possible. So the lowest possible is zero. The value is just before, so that low is always um, is always outside of the bounds, is minus one. Now for high, what's the highest value? Well, the highest value is just the difference between the minimum of position and the maximum of position, right? And since we want to, again, just go outside the bounds, we will just have this be the maximum of position minus the min of position plus one, okay? But there is one thing as well. Um, this example here is sorted, but we are not guaranteed that it's sorted. What we determined here is that it's monotonic, but only if position is sorted. So we need to sort position. So basically, step one, we need to sort position array, okay? And then once we do that, um, then this here, since it's the max position minus the min position, it can be just the last position minus the first position plus one. Okay, so now the only thing remaining for us before we can apply our binary search um, implementation is to determine f of x. What is f of x? Um, well, we said f of x is just whether we can place m balls um, in the baskets that we have in positions such that the minimum force is x, right? So how do we do that? Well, we can just we can just go through the positions, right? So we have a position array. Um, so we have one, uh, let me write them down. We have one, two, three, four, seven, right? So these are the positions. So we can get, just go through these, right? Start at position one. And we want the minimum magnetic force to be x. So we need the next position to be what x here is whatever value it is. So we need the next position to be, uh, let's call this the current one, to be at least current plus x or bigger. So we need the next position to be bigger or equal to this. Because if it's smaller, then that means x is not the minimum magnetic force. Okay. And so how do we do that? Well, we just traverse and check, is this position this? No, if it's not, we don't put in it. 
right? If it's not, we don't increment the number of balls we placed. So let's say the number of balls we placed, we placed one at the first position. And so we check, is three one plus x? Let's say, for example, in the example where x equal to three. No, and so we move to four. Is three x plus current plus um, uh, x? Yes, and so we place it here now. And we put current here. So now we have two balls. And then we go to the next position, 7. Is 7 x uh, current plus x, which is 4 plus 3? Yes, so we place it here. And now we place it three balls, which is the m we need. And so at the end, what do we need to check? Well, we need to check that we at least placed m, so bigger or equal. Now, equal makes sense, but why bigger? Because if you if you were able to place more, well, you could just not place the last. Let's say you you needed only to place uh, four and you placed it six. So what you need to do is just not place the last two and you will be good. That won't change the minimum magnetic force, right? And so this would be what we need to check at the end. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Now let's just dive into the implementation and I think everything will be more clear. Okay. Um, okay, so let's implement what we saw in the overview. So we said first we need to sort position. And then after that, we need our low and high. And we said each low is minus one and high is just the max possible, which is just the last, the maximum position minus the minimum one plus one just to be outside of the bound. Remember, low and high, we want them to be outside of the bounds so that we just don't have a problem, let's say, if if the pattern was like this for a specific position or if the pattern was like this right if we put low at the first position then l low would be false even though maybe we wanted it to be true so we just want to avoid any issues with the bounds you could just place low and high outside of the bounds and our my template binary search is to make sure that the is to make sure that in our case here we have true 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 false 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 so our template is that we want low to be at the last position of true and high to be at the first position of false so that at the end we want to return low okay because that's what would be true in this case we want the last true because we want the maximum minimum magnetic force so this would be the maximum value where the value of f of x would be true Okay, and so now we just get our mid and we do it like this to avoid overflow. So low plus high divided by two using this binary format. And we check f of mid. Um, I'm going to call f of mid can place because we are checking if we can place m balls using mid, the value of mid as, magnet, as minimum magnetic force. Um, and so if it's true, then we, let's say, if it's true, that means it's somewhere here. So that means we need to place low at that position because low has to always be true. That's our invariant in this case. And high is always false. That's our invariant in this case. So here that means low needs to be mid. If it's false, since the invariant is high needs to be always false, we need high to be false here. So we set it to mid. And now we can just implement our um, can place function. So can place x. So we start first in the first position as we said, and the ball is first placed in the first position. So we currently have one ball. And then we go for the rest of the positions. And we check. If the current position plus x is small or equal to p, right? We don't, if p is, if the position is bigger than these two, we don't want to place the ball in that position. But if it's bigger or equal, we do want to place it there. Because then that means it doesn't violate the fact that we need x to be the minimum magnetic force, right? Because this means basically, actually maybe a better way to write this is p minus current needs to be at least x. So needs to be at least x. Okay? Basically this is magnetic force at least x. Then in that case, we set the current, we place the ball. So now place the ball at, place ball at P. So we, we place the ball, so we increment ball by one. And then at the end, we want to make sure that we at least placed all the balls. 
if we place it more, then we can just ignore it and not do it. Um, okay, so let's run this, see if it passes. And it gets accepted, okay? Um, now, in terms of time complexity, obviously this is all flag N because it's a binary search um, on position N being the length of position, um, which is the number basically of baskets. Um, and then, but the can place function, this is also O of N. So this is actually overall, um, this portion for the sorting is O of N like N because it's sorting. The binary search portion is O of like N. And then this function is O of uh, N, right? But the overall binary search function, since it has each iteration cause can place, is actually O of N like N. So O of N like N two times, it's O of N like N overall. Um, that's the time complexity. Um, in terms of space, we are not really using extra space. Um, we are just using the position array, so it's O of one, um, it's O of one uh, space. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it for this problem. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one. Bye.